Thank you guys for still being here. I, it's not easy to be the last speaker. I can imagine how your brains got filled with so much content during the past few days. So I'm here to talk about how to build your tech network. So it's uh, about community. This is me. I'm Johan. I'm a tech evangelist at a company called Stylite. We are a fashion e-commerce company. And I've been building communities for about 10 years now. My mission right now is to make my company known in the tech ecosystem. So I organize a lot of events and I build our network as a company. So what is this talk about? It sounds a bit cryptic, right? Like build your network, tech network. Um, well, I will lead you through my journey, you know, of building and rebuilding my own network. Um, <clears throat> I will talk about how techies can, you know, do proper networking. Sometimes it's a bit difficult, like uh, some of us are introverts. And importantly, why companies should also start building their own network. So this is my journey in three icons. Um, I lived for 30 years in Paris, or actually in France, not really in Paris, but uh, I lived in Paris also for a while. And, um, and then when I was 30 years old, I met uh, through one of my friends, I met uh, a like, pretty well-known uh, figure in the French tech ecosystem. And uh, you know, he pitched me his idea of like, building an online video conversation platform. And uh, he ended up with something like, do you want to be in? And like, why not co-found this company with me? I need someone technical to do it. The only thing is I'm moving to San Francisco. I was like, let me think about it. it. Took me about like half an hour. And I came back to him and I was like, OK, let's do this. We got $6 million on the bank account uh, from, the Skype invest from the Skype founders. And we moved to San Francisco. And I arrived over there. I didn't know many people, of course. Um, but we were pretty famous, you know, like uh, the company was like uh, always on TechCrunch and uh, things like that. And uh, it was a bit odd for me because like it was, you know, like uh, suddenly uh, like being thrown a little bit in the lion's cage. And to the point where like my, my co-founder, uh, we were on the conference and he was like, yeah, like go talk to these, these engineers over there. Like uh, we need to find more engineers. And I was like, okay, I don't know how to do this. Um, so very introverted, you know. And uh, and I got you know the hang of it. Like I was, as I said, like thrown in the cold water, and uh, I learned as I went by, and uh, I learned a lot of things. And uh, after seven years in, uh, in beautiful San Francisco, I decided to move to Munich. Like a lot of people ask me, like, uh, why did you do that? And uh, <laughs> that's only really the first question. Uh, and my response is for the beer, as you see. That. But it's not really true. Um, and uh, the second question they ask is, what is so different with Silicon Valley compared to here? So my response is always the same. It's a network. That's a big part. Of course, you know, uh, there's a lot of other things in Silicon Valley. But the network, to me, is really the crucial part that makes it so different. It's its density, so how many nodes are in this network, the connectedness, how basically vertices are connected through those nodes, and uh, its ability to reconfigure. It's a really different ecosystem because you see a lot of people, you know, like uh, joining a new job and leaving after six months and founding a new company and uh, crashing a company and uh, joining another one. And so there's a lot of, you know, it's, it's really dynamic. It has this, really this capacity to, this capacity to uh, evolve and, and reconfigure all the time. I love this quote from Salma, Sam Altman. He's a co-founder at Y Combinator, one of the most successful, uh, um, you know, uh, angel and slash seed VC in, uh, in Silicon Valley. Uh, which says Silicon Valley works because there is such a high density of people working on startups and they are inclined to help each other. And that's really, really true. 
So what I discovered is that anytime you need help, people will help you. And we actually have something like a, a saying in, uh, you know, in, in, in France, uh, between like French entrepreneurs, uh, which is like uh, in Paris, people will tell you like the 10 reasons why your project is not going to work. And in San Francisco, they will uh, you know, connect you to the 10 people you should meet. That's very, very true. So some learning of my Silicon Valley experience is that the network is really powerful. It will help you in your career. You have to take care of it. You have to nurture it. Somehow it's a safety net because like, if you have a good network and you, know, you want to leave or like, you pushed out, uh, you can always you know, count on your network to actually uh, get your back. There's a lot of codes in this network, how it's built, how you should interact with it. Um, like, how do you make like, intros to people? Uh, so that's a lot of learning that has to be done you know, on, the, on the spot. Um, and, and then, like, you know, it's really interesting to bring that back to, uh, to Europe. I think there's a lot of uh, really interesting things in there that we can learn from, from San Francisco and from Silicon Valley in general. And finally, like one of the most, like one of the biggest fundamental principles in, in Silicon Valley is this pay it forward, which means do something for others without you know, the uh, expectation that is going to come back to you right afterwards, but somehow it will come back to you. And then I'm back in Munich, so starting from scratch, no network over there, no friends, I don't speak German, still don't speak German actually, uh, and uh, also not really an idea about what to do. So what did I do? I, you know, for like uh, about a year I was kind of wondering, that's, you know, like the time I basically had to figure out like what I can do. So I started to organize Docker Meetup. I arrived in Munich and I uh, was quite interested in Docker and nothing was going on. So I was like, I'm just going to do this, uh, this Meetup myself. And, um, and that's how I learned, you know, how to uh, bring things that I learned in Silicon Valley and, uh, and bring that to, uh, to Germany. And, and that's my talk today about like how we can Aztec is do better networking. So why is it so important for us? It's you know, the best way to advance your career. Uh, as I mentioned it before, like, the safety net aspect is quite important, even though like, in, uh, in Europe you have better safety nets. But uh, you know, like when, you, uh, when you fall somehow and you want to find something that is your next job that is going to be exciting, like the network, is a good way to, uh, to tap into to, to, uh, to make that happen. Of course, making new friends. And also because we are human beings. We are social animals. We, are, we, you know, we bond socially, and, uh, and it's really important for, for us. So how do we approach that? Well, the first thing before, you know, like, uh, putting yourself out there uh, and like organizing a lot of things, I would say is to participate. And participating can be, for example, uh, in meetups. So uh, <clears throat> that's what I did when I arrived in Munich. Like I, uh, you know, I went to a few meetups and uh, I remember like the first meetup I went to, um, presenter was doing his, his talk in, uh, in English and, uh, and then like suddenly there was like the networking time as usual and like everyone started to speak in German and I was a bit like okay I don't know what to do uh, so I just left and um, <laughs> but basically uh, you know when you when you come back and like, people start to uh, to see you and uh, and they start to engage with you and uh, that's quite important. That keeps you also like motivated to uh, uh, to engage yourself in this uh, in this meetup. Uh, conferences, well, we are in one right now. Uh, that's the conference I organize. Uh, it's in Munich. It's called Dahuam. And 
Actually, I don't find conference like so easy to navigate for like you know uh, introverts because there's a lot of people. Um, that's why I ended up you know like uh, organizing mine so people uh, know me and I don't have to network too much. Uh, but uh, it's also like a good place to uh, to meet new people. And I hope who has met someone new. Wow, awesome, good job. Hackathons, uh, something like, uh, I, I really like the hackathon format actually because you are kind of uh, forced to collaborate with, uh, you know, with a team uh, for 24, 48, 72 hours. And that actually push you to, uh, to get to know people and get to know like how they work and like sometimes you can find, you know, really interesting uh, people. Once you know, like you're a participant in those events, like the next step, obviously, is to contribute, like actively contributing to them. So offline, what you can do is you can speak at a meetup. You know, uh, I am as an, uh, as an organizer, I'm always looking for for new speakers, uh, and like most organizers do actually, because it's one of the hardest things to uh, to find speakers. I know it's hard, and believe me, like being here on this stage, it's it's not that easy. Uh, but tech talks are actually generally fine uh, because you know you have your your stuff, and uh, you generally know it really well. And uh, it's just a question of like you know putting yourself out there. Oops. <clears throat> then organizing your own meetups. It's actually even easier because. Somehow you are, uh, you know, like people will approach you as the organizer, so you don't really have to go to them; they will go to you. I like that. The thing is, like generally, for the first meetup you're going to organize, you're going to need to speak as well, because most likely you won't have any speakers. So keep that in mind. Um, then you can organize your own hackathon. It's not super easy, but it's doable, or your own conference. It's a bit a crazy thing to do. And something I would like you guys to do right now is to do like a big round of applause for like the people of about you for putting this together. Because being myself a conference organizer, I know how insanely hard it is to do that. So It's like you don't sleep for like you know about a month before, um, and then finally find events where you can help. So uh, you know I do that a lot, and uh, by just uh, you know volunteering to uh, to an event or like by hosting people, I have a big space at my company, and uh, we can you know host a lot of uh, of, uh, of events. So. Uh, it's quite often that I have organizers who come to me and be like, "Hey, I just lost my location because like something happened. Like, could you could you help me?" And that's something I generally do. Uh, mentoring, it's really like uh, to me, it's a very important thing to uh, uh, that you can contribute to the outside, like your insight, your knowledge. Um, not only speaking at a conference, but like on a one-to-one -one basis. I think it's very powerful and it really helps people to grow and to, uh, to become the better version of themselves. If you want to know how to organize good meetups, I have something for you. Uh, just go on our tech blog and uh, you can check that out. I have a version coming with how to organize the best hackathon as well. Then online, uh, what else you can do online? It's I like to be present. Uh, I don't really have a blog. I, you know, I, I found it like a bit hard to maintain it on a regular basis, so uh, I don't do that. But I do contribute, for example, on Cora. I publish uh, my uh, presentation on uh, speaker deck or slide share. Uh, you can answer people on Stack Overflow as well. It's a good way to be out there, and somehow, like people will, you know, start to notice and. Like I built my career out of that basically. I when I started, uh, you know, like uh, being really into the uh, the open source uh, community, around maybe 20, and um, 
like a company which was behind a project I was contributing to actually invited me to San Francisco, and like that's you know how I got to know like a lot of, uh, of new things and uh, uh, to have like another view of this uh, of this community and what my work as an open source contributor can actually like the kind of impact it can have on my life. So by becoming an active participant in your community, doors will open to you. That's my personal experience. Uh, as I said, I've been living about you know, 20 years. I, I've, my career is about 20 years uh, long, and I've mostly relied on that to find my new jobs, to find friends, and so on. So here are a few networking uh, acts. <coughs> So if you're like me and you're an introvert, sometimes people have a hard time to uh, believe me that I am actually an introvert, but I am. Uh, you kind of, you know, like uh, need to go through that thing. Like your comfort zone is out there, and this is where things are happening. So be here right now, it's, it's you know, it's slightly uncomfortable to me. Um, Speaking in public, it's quite uncomfortable as well. Mingling with people, that's a picture I took there. Uh, it's, uh, it's also difficult, uh, as I said, like especially in a conference setting. I have quite a uh, hard time to, uh, to go through that, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you as well. So I have a few tricks. Um, listen and ask questions. So it can be as simple as just joining a group of people and uh, listening about you know, what's going on, what they're talking about, and asking a few questions. <laughs> Try to be a bit different. Wear a jungle bent, uh, grow a moustache, uh, or a big hair. Uh, anything you know, like that can uh, act as an icebreaker is really pretty good. I, uh, I also sometimes replace my, uh, the buttons on my uh, button shirt with like a red, red button. And you would not believe how many comments I get on that. And like people are just like, yeah, like did you design it yourself? Or like, uh, what is this brand? So it's good because like as an introvert, I would have to, you know, make the first step. Like people do. And uh, yeah, that's... Give yourself goal. Goals. So uh, I have a personal goal, which is when I do an event or when I go to an event, I want to meet at least one person. It's a pretty small goal, but like if you manage to actually connect to one person, then maybe the next time is going to be you know more person because this person maybe will introduce you to others and so on. So small goals, but I think it's really important to have at least one to push you, you know, a little bit further out of your comfort zone. Embrace your vulnerability. There are days where you know, you're more introverted than others. Sometimes it's just like the, the wrong timing. Uh, it happens to me, like, uh, you know, I don't know, I have uh, like a big, big event coming up and I'm like, oh, I don't feel it, I'm just so introvert right now. I have a, I have a friend, for example, uh, a few uh, few days ago who told me, yeah, uh, I went to Burning Man, and like you know this crazy festival in uh, in uh, Nevada desert, and uh, but the thing is like I was introverted for like at least three days, like I was in my deepest introversion moment, and it was so difficult because everyone is so extroverted extroverted over there, and I found that beautiful, like to be you know actually able to. Uh, you know, pinpoint that and be like, yeah, this is just who I am, and you know, this is part of me, and uh, and somehow you need to deal with it. Small talks. Americans are really good with that. Germans not so much. A lot of room for improvement. Uh, you know, it's. Uh, it's about like how do you connect in the first place with someone, right? So, I, I personally I like small talks, like uh, because uh, as an introvert, I think they make it like much easier to uh, 
But sometimes you're also, of course, wondering, like, you know, if it's not a bit stupid to do that. But I think it's actually quite a useful uh, trick. Um, and one obvious one is, like, you know, to, uh, to find something, like you're at an event, like this conference, and uh, you find someone um, who's maybe like um, even more introverted than you are, like you know, looking a bit like that and just trying to not establish any eye contact. And uh, you know, you can go to them and be like, "Hey, uh, is this your first time at uh, this conference?" It's small talk, right? But it opens the door, and and that is quite important because then you can follow up with like a full-blown conversation. You can get to know this person. Or not. Um, I think it's uh, it's one of the uh, of the good things I learned in uh, in, in the U.S. Knowing how to leave a boring conversation is also a useful one. It just happens sometimes, you know. Like you're stuck with someone, and uh, and like you don't see like any way out to just go away. And um, so there's a few things there that you can do. I've tried quite a few things. Uh, try to add people to the conversation so you can leave. Uh, just excuse yourself and go to the bathroom. It's like, ah. Uh, you know, or just say that you, uh, you want to get something to drink. Hopefully they won't follow you. <laughs> or just uh, spot someone you know and be like, oh, excuse me, but uh, I, I need to, uh, to talk to this guy. And hopefully you, you really know them. Give and take. So that's that's a lot of text, uh, but that's you know kind of typical exchange in uh, in Silicon Valley. So uh, uh, hey, I'm Johan. Nice to meet you. Uh, oh, nice to meet you, Johan. Uh, is this your first time at this meetup? That's the small talk part, right? Um, yes, I'm working on this uh, this new startup. And we're building uh, Uber for dogs, powered by AI. Don't laugh because actually I, I looked it up and there is a Uber for dogs. Uh, <laughs> cool. Is there anything I can help you with? And that actually is one key thing that people do in Silicon Valley. This question, like so. Uh, arrive like so early in the conversation that sometimes you're even like you know kind of taken out of uh, uh, you don't know how to react to that and uh, but it, it's it's really important and um, that's how people actually connect and help each other and so generally you know you have something you can uh, ask help with like yes maybe some help on uh, you know on some feedback on your UI it doesn't take like much time like. Why not getting like a quick coffee? And, uh, and then like, by the way, have you met uh, Brandon? Uh, he's, uh, you know, he's an investor and he's investing a lot in the dog market. So this have you met Brandon yet is also something that people do super easily. They connect each other to others. So that way they actually increase the density of their network. And to me, that's something that we in Europe, like we still have quite some work to do uh, in there. It doesn't mean that it cannot be fixed. Uh, you know, when I, uh, I I left France about ten years ago, and uh, when I left, actually there was not much going on in the startup scene. Uh, this day, like in France and in Paris, uh, are doing pretty good, and mostly because like a few companies, like a few a group of people, like the family, for example, they actually. Uh, uh, created this, you know, this network. They started to connect people. They uh, they started to basically give a, a role model for people, uh, organizing a lot of events, throwing really cool parties, and and that way, like they build their own community. And like the, the community of uh, uh, of the family, I think, is uh, like more than ten thousand people on Meetup, which is pretty crazy for a Meetup group. And that's how they build their own, you know, uh, incubator slash accelerator, whatnot. And that's how they operate through building the community. And before that, you know, no, nothing was really happening in Paris. So I think we have something we can learn from that, and that we can bring and you know create better ecosystem for ourselves. 
I touched on this one a bit earlier, paying it forward. It's really important that uh, you, know, you don't do things just because you want something in return. I do that all the time. Like I connect people, I uh, offer some introductions to people, uh, I other meetups, and, uh, and somehow it comes back to us as a company as well. As for help, don't be shy. Just, you know, like, uh, and more importantly, don't, uh, don't think that people will actually uh, steal your idea. I still see that here. Like, yeah, I'm working on this cool uh, startup, uh, but I can't tell you what it is because it's still stealth and uh, I'm too afraid that someone is going to, uh, to steal it. Ask for introductions. You know, um, one of the code, for example, in Silicon Valley, is that you will be able to meet investors quite easily. Uh, you can you know, send them an email, they will reply. They will never invest that way. They will only invest if you come from a trusted source, from the network. How to ask for an introduction? There's a link. I'm going to use a laser here. Uh, which is really good. Uh, it explains, you know, how you actually ask for an introduction. How, you know, uh, uh, you know, how can I ask my friend to uh, or my uh, contact to introduce me to this other person I want to meet? Um, and like, there's a few things you need to uh, to follow. So, um, like, so the first thing is like when you want to ask that, like, pretty much any time you need it. Uh, how to ask it? Uh, you need to define, you know, clarity in what you want to ask. Like, are you looking for money? Are you uh, looking for an advisor? Uh, it's quite important to have this uh, this uh, purpose really defined. Call to action: just like, you know, ask a uh, person right away if uh, they can give you some time, uh, just for a coffee. Sometimes, you know, if you get the intro, follow up. If you don't, you burn a bridge. So the more often you get out there, the easier it gets. And I actually asked my friends, like just to make sure I'm not drinking my own cool head, you know? Uh, does this you know, networking thing actually work? Like, uh, have you met some people through uh, meetup Akatons? Uh, and like, wh what did it change in your life? And that was just a few answers that I got. I got quite a few on my uh, on my Facebook. Um, and I, I love like you know the positiveness in there. Like, uh, I found an awesome mentor for life from a meetup. I basically moved to Munich because one woman started talking to me at a conference. I found an awesome job and started to uh, working with Python. It's I, I love those stories and it. It just shows like how important it is to actually, you know, participate and engage with others. And then you have like this one, like I met my ex, with whom I spent two years of my life at a hackathon. <laughs> Found the best mentor I could imagine. That was me actually. Uh, I met a lot of my life through a meetup. Met my girlfriend through a meetup. Now let's talk a little bit, a little bit about networking for tech companies. So this is basically what I do, right, for a living. Why, as a company, should you build your network? Because you're looking for this guy, this full-stack programmer unicorn that is going to solve all your problems. And it's really hard to find. So those are like some statistics from Stack Overflow. Uh, they send every year a survey uh, to 6,400 yeah, 64,000 actually uh, people. And that shows that basically the people who are not employed and looking for work are only 1.3%. So your odds to find the developers are not really, really good, right? And uh, the good thing is that developers actually, you know, uh, stay open for possibilities. possibilities. So uh, for new opportunities, so that's where you want to tap into. 
how did uh, how does the developer find uh, you know the, the current job? Well, obviously through the network, friend, family members, and so on. Sometimes you have an image problem as well. At Stylight, a company I work for, uh, we are a fashion company. Fashion, engineering, not so well. So the main problem there is that you know when you approach dev like approach developers, and the only thing they know about your company is that you're a fashion company, uh, it doesn't really work so well. So you need to change that somehow. And that, that's also the case, you know, for like big media. Like we are part of uh, uh, Procibent, Procibent at Heinz, and they have exactly the same problem. They're seen as, you know, old media company, and so then, you know, like they also want to change that. And the only way to really do that is by, you know, contributing to uh, to the tech ecosystem. So of course you can do your, you know, pretty tech blog and so on. But it's really by action that you know you're going to make a difference. In uh, in Munich, a lot of people know Stylite because I'm everywhere. Like I'm going to every hackathons. I'm mentoring a lot of uh, people, a lot of startups. I just you know, literally, I'm everywhere. So that's a way to you know build your community and get into the eyes of those people. So as I said. Uh, it's also important to engage your, the engineers in your company because if it's only me, it doesn't work. So part of my role is actually to bring other engineers to like these meetups, uh, get them to talk to uh, conferences, uh, mentor them, help them uh, writing some open source code, uh, you know, adding the license and uh, uh, you know, reviewing some code. Uh, helping them with uh, the blog. I don't really love to blog, so I try to have them blogging. Organizing hackathons, for example, it's another good one. And of course, the meetups. So uh, at Starlight, we organize about two meetups per week, which people think that it's uh, it's a lot, but I think that's you know how you actually uh, start to get into like people's heads. So who in your company can do that? Of course, if you have a tech evangelist, that's good. Uh, if not, like most companies, then you need to train uh, HR to do that, right? Um, and of course, you also need to use your, your techies as ambassadors. Or you can also work with like a developer agency, developer relationship ag agency. How do you organize good events? Who is a meetup organizer here? Few, yeah, that's good. Who goes to meetup? Nice. Went at least to one hackathon. Not bad, not bad. All right. So, how to organize good events? Um, I think it's really impor important to have like a clear purpose for the event, right? If you define it too loosely, then uh, People don't really know if it's worth their time. At the end of the day, you're asking, you know, uh, them to spend like a few hours on the evening uh, to uh, to your event, and uh, you need to uh, to give them something concrete. Uh, I like to define agendas in advance and say, okay, like uh, it starts at that time, and like for half an hour, we are going to uh, do some networking, pizza and stuff, uh, and then the first talk, there's networking. Second talk and then again networking. Uh, if possible, provide the food and drinks. If you can't, ask for sponsorship. Generally, it works. Uh, at least in Munich, it works pretty well. It's it's nice because like a lot of people just go after work, you know, like to your meetup, and uh, you don't want them starving or thirsty, even worse. What you should not do. Send an army of rec recruiter to uh, to your event. I've seen that; it doesn't work really well. Uh, it's just annoying for you know for the participants. 
uh, doing the boring company presentation. When I, when, when I started at Stylite, actually, uh, they, uh, they did that. Uh, they had this, you know, 10, 15 minutes sometimes uh, pitch about the company and like what they do and, and things like that. And the first thing I did when I arrived is just like removing that. We don't have any company presentation. I just invite people to come to me if they want to know more about the company. Forget the we are hiring because everyone is hiring, really. Uh, <laughs> Sponsoring a meetup to give uh, a sales talk. Bad idea because, you know, it's boring for everyone, really. Uh, I've seen that even from like pretty tech companies, uh, pretty renowned, they still somehow like try to fit, you know, like uh, uh, sales or person or like solution architect that is going to do like a sales talk. It, it doesn't really work well. Um, and the thing is like people then start leaving because, you know, why should you spend, waste your time like that? Uh, if you're just active like once in a while, it doesn't really work well either because you need to get into the front of eyeballs of developers uh, quite a lot. What I like is being authentic, uh, showing your passion, be relevant, try to uh, invite, as I said, like people to come and talk to you, help them. Uh, that's, uh, I think, one of the core principles. Uh, and help can be like in many, many ways, right? So, uh, but just offer it, you know, like, how can I help you? And introduce people to each other. Like, you know, I'm talking with, uh, with someone and uh, like, uh, um, I, I see someone else that I know coming by, then I will connect them too. And maybe I will leave as well. If <laughs> um, so building a better community starts by you, right? Like, uh, it just cannot happen like that if we don't contribute. So everyone has, you know, uh, his share of uh, contribution to make. And, and the thing is, like, this is going to help you greatly in your career. So my question to you is, how can I help you? Thank you. <laughs> Questions? Was I so boring? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thanks for the talk. Thank you. Um, so one good thing to uh, make your company known that you are hiring is to get people to speak at conferences, mm -hmm. but how can you convince engineers to speak for conferences and also how can you help and support them to do that? Well, you know, like speaking at a conference sometimes uh, feels as like a big step, like in the unknown. Uh, and I even speak for myself, like uh, it's, it's not easy. Um, so one thing you can do is to organize first like uh, internal talk, you know, like we have that, uh, brown bag lunch. You organize that and like, you know, you're in between people you actually know. So it's not too intimidating. That's one thing you can do. Then you can also uh, try to find a meetup for them to give a talk. It's less pressure. It's going to be maybe like, you know, 50, maximum 100 people. Uh, it's a good, uh, you know, uh, a segue to, uh, to a conference. So uh, that would be my advice. Start small and just like building up. Uh, build, it, build it up and, uh, you know, of course, also like offer your, your support as uh, uh, someone who will uh, listen to the rehearsal, for example. Also, like, I don't know if, how many people really rehearse at all, but uh, it's, it's yeah, something you can, uh, you can definitely uh, suggest. Yes. Uh, first of all, thanks for the talk. It was really, really inspiring. And thank you. For me, it was the best talk from the event by oh, far. Thank you. <laughs> uh, one question. Uh, so, how do you keep up? How do you combine like 
your regular work with being a tech evangelist or being someone that basically becomes a synonym of, of your company? Is it like a full-time job or do you yeah. get to, to balance what you do with your regular tasks like putting things into production and shipping stuff? No, I, I don't ship anything anymore. Uh, <laughs> I, I, it's my full-time role actually. So uh, I just, uh, you know, like uh, I don't really have a typical day. Um, but I organize a lot of events, so I just have like two meetups per week, approximately. Uh, and I also organize a conference, um, which takes about four months of my uh, of my year to organize. Uh, and then I also give you know talks in conferences and workshops and uh, uh, some mentoring and so on. So it's actually like a full-time job, right? Uh, and. Um, Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it, it is a full-time job. Uh, so, like, so sometimes I do code because I uh, also, uh, for example, create workshops, uh, like technical workshops. So, I, uh, like, the last one I gave was on the IoT and blockchain, where I actually implemented like a working prototype of it, uh, because you know it it gives like a better sense of uh, the technology and uh, what it can do. Uh, but uh, yeah, I haven't been deploying in production for quite some time now, <laughs> which is good. Um. Yes. Hi, thanks Hello. for your talk. Thank you. Um, my question is, how do you keep in touch with people? Like, um, do you use LinkedIn to stay in touch or do that's you just wait question. for the next um, workshop or conference? Or? Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, it's it's a bit tricky. Uh, I use Facebook a lot, actually, for my professional network. Uh, I, I really try at the beginning to not mix like you know personal, and it just doesn't work. So I, now I just add whoever wants to connect with me. Uh, same on LinkedIn. So uh, it's really a mix of like uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, a bit of Twitter here and there. Um, Meetup has also its own messaging system, so it's a bit hard to, you know, have like kind of like reconcile everything because also on Meetup, for example, you don't have access to email addresses. So, uh, and I also have like something like uh, five or six Meetup accounts, so it's it's a bit hard sometimes to keep track uh, of things. Uh, Jenny, people add me either on LinkedIn or on Facebook, and it works quite well. Also easy for m making like introductions and things like that. You can just uh, message them and uh, it works. All right. No more questions. Oh, the uh, last one. <laughs> Thank you very much. And where did you get your trousers? Just <laughs> <laughs> <G -star. laughs> They have a new uh, collection coming up. <laughs> it's animal print. <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs>